Welcome, everyone. I'm here. Um, I hope you can hear me. I'm uh, on a relatively slow internet connection today. So um, thank you for being here. And I don't think that I have any of my, let me see if I have any of my JV partners on the line. Um, I don't think I do, uh, except for the Walmart is there. Okay, well, thank you for being here. I haven't quite uh, gotten everything together here, so let me do that and show you my screen here. Okay, so I usually put up welcome to the webinar, which I'll put in here, and I'll make the type much larger so you can actually see it. That would be helpful. So, uh, first off, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, it's that time of year, and uh, good to have you. So, a couple of updates from last week. We were talking about the whole idea of the Kindle thing, and I got to tell you that I've got. Uh, now, I think I showed last week that I had something like 35 or 40 orders. Uh, this week, I'm, I'm up to 97 different orders. So I've got uh, Kindle orders keep rolling in. That's something we can talk a little bit about. Uh, but in addition to that, what I want to do, since we don't have any of the JV partners on here, one of the things I'd like to do is open this up for questions. It's the end of the year. It's the beginning of the new year. So I'd like to see what questions you might have that I can help you answer. Um, I'll be throwing in some things here that I think are important, but um, I want to know from you. So feel free to put your questions in the question box in the GoToWebinar form um, so we can cover some of those. I will tell you a few of the things that I'm doing right now that I find would probably benefit you. And one of those is I have set up, uh, or I'm trying to set up, uh, and Lynn, I'll get to that in just a second here. Lynn has a question. I'm trying to set up a what I call a, t uh, a template. Everybody knows what a template is, right? So a template to create books. And since I'm on a Mac, I'm using a program called Pages. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a template that has sort of, you know, I, I, I think of books as having levels. And so for me, the levels in a book are level, and I, I actually put an L1 like this next to everything that is a chapter title. And I think this should be interesting and helpful to the rest of you as well. So any chapter title will have this L1 next to it. L2 I use for sub chapter headings. And I use the term L3 or the convention L3 for sub Subchapter headings. It's like a you know a hierarchical system of doing this. And when I do this, I want to. I'm, I'm actually. I think I tried to find somebody to do this for me. But I, it's a pretty simple concept, which is I want to have sort of the same format. So every time I do a book, I can always have it set up so that there's a L1 and it it always looks like this type and this size type, and then L2 and it would be for subchapters and L3 because everything. That I do. I always sort of work sequentially from there. So I'm working right now on my latest book on information marketing that should be out right after the end of the year because I I have somebody that's ready to, to go as soon as I'm finished editing it and I've got about uh, eh, maybe 60 pages left. So this is what I use and I use a program called Pages and Pages is on the Mac. Um, and it's sort of like Microsoft Word. By the way, you can save pages. If you go to save, you can save, you can save as a, an MS Word document. So now, that being said, let me quickly see if I can answer a couple of Lynn's questions here. Uh, what is involved in converting my books to Kindle is the first question. So let me just sort of copy that. I wonder if they let me copy this question over from this area here. Let me see if I can do that over to here. Ah, uh, yes, nice. There you go. So that's Lynn's first question. What's involved in converting my book to Kindle? Uh, first off, remember that Kindle, if, if, if you don't have a Kindle, get one, uh, or at least get a Kindle reader for your computer or for your um, your PDA or whatever, you know, if you use an iPhone like I do, just so you know what the thing looks like. Because one of the things is that you have to keep your, you have to keep it formatted very, very simply. And if you, I, I did an interview that you should probably listen to, Lynn, with a guy named Joshua Talent, T-A-L-L-E-N-T. And when I did that, he owns a site called kindleformatting.com. That interview is on my site, fredgleek.com. And if you 
wanted to, we could probably find where that is. So sometimes when people ask me about this stuff, I even have to look, sort of search my own site because I sometimes forget where I have put things. Um, now, I'm hoping that you can all still hear me uh, just because my connection is kind of crappy. But um, I'm hoping if you, if you can't hear me for some reason, put it in the question and say can't hear you, in which case I don't know what my response is going to be, but I'll say I'm sorry. Um, just because I'm, I'm in a situation where I can't get anything better than the internet connection we have right now. So go to Fred Gleek and put in, let's just put in Joshua and see if it comes up on that alone. So I do, do my own site and I search for it. And let's see if this will come up there. By the way, I'm getting, I got the pop-up there for my, uh, for my, uh, it's doing it now. Let's see what happens. So I'm searching, the guy that I interviewed was a guy named Joshua Talent, T-A-L-L-E-N-T. And so I'm searching for Joshua. Let's see if we can find that interview. That, by the way, it's an audio interview that I did with Joshua. So Lynn, with regards to the question of formatting, uh, let's see here, yeah, here it is, here we go. So if you search for Joshua Talent uh, from kindleformatting.com, uh, in this interview, which is an audio, I don't think we've had this transcribed yet. So go to my site, fredgleek.com, put in Joshua as the keyword, search this, and you will find this particular interview, which is a good one. And I would suggest that you check that out. Yeah, here it is. I did a Skype interview with him. So um, just click right there, and you'll see Joshua and myself talking. So that's the answer to that one. Let me see what your next one is. Um, Next question is, if I convert manuscripts to Kindle, and why don't I do the same thing I did last time here, which is go here, and let's see, I'm going to replace this question with the one you just asked, and that is, if I convert manuscripts to Kindle, they work on the Nook. Uh, first off, I hate to tell you this, especially if you're a Nook person, but not many ebooks are being sold on the Nook. The Nook is, is sort of, uh, in my opinion, it's probably going to die. I hate to say that, folks, but it's it's not looking too good for the Nook long term. Uh, Kindle is becoming, I mean, if you remember the the old fight in the old days between VHS and Beta, uh, where Beta was the better format. It's not which is the better format. It's the format that's going to survive. Chances are it's going to be the Kindle because Amazon is the 800-pound the gorilla in that market. And so I would uh, suggest that you think about the Nook. Naturally, you want to get any sales that you can. But as I understand it, from people who do a lot of um, kind, or a lot of ebook publishing, for every one sale they make on the Nook, they make 20 sales on the Kindle. Repeat, 20 to 1 ratio. Huge difference in numbers. So although the question is certainly valid and relevant, um, it really isn't, you know, it really isn't all that important to your long-term success. So now I know we've got a number of other people on the call, and hopefully you can all hear me. So feel free to send me any questions that you have, uh, because now's a good time to do that, because all of my JV partners are off uh, frolicking somewhere in the, uh, either in the winter snow or the, uh, on the beach somewhere. So go ahead and feel free to send me other questions. Those are two good questions by Lynn. Lynn, thank you very much. And to give you an idea, I think, again, last week, when we went, went to, and I'll, I'll you know, I'm, I'm not really doing any hiding of anything here. And I want to show you something interesting as it relates to this Kindle process. First off, why? You know, why should you be involved? I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you, you know, Kindle, why? And first off, every, most of what I'm selling, I'm selling for 99 cents. And at 99 cents, they give me 35%. So I'm making, what is that about? Yeah, let me see, what's that? 35 cents times 30 cents, yeah, maybe... 30 cents a piece. So I'm getting 30, 30 cents for every order. So the question is, why do this? Why even get involved with selling Kindle items? First off, remember again that people are, I mean, they're buying these things at a, an incredible pace. It was at a million a month they were selling Kindles. And now it's over the Christmas season, I think it went up to three or four million, something like that. But the real reason is because I want people to buy things for me even things that are relatively cheap, and I want them to then find out about my other products and services and what I call, and all of you should know as a bounce back offer. 
and bounce back offers are where someone is reading one of my Kindle books or any of my other ebooks or one of my other products and it tells them to go somewhere else to get something else for free or you know at a, something that's related so what I'm doing is I'm cross promoting constantly the different items um, you know sort of incestuously so sort of within within my own sphere um, I am telling per, a person who's listening to product A about product B, C, D, and E and that's what bounce back offers are is within an existing product be it free so the idea is I don't really care and if I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up my uh, my site right let me just give you this here I have it bookmarked here and so this is my site for my Kindle and my Kindle options and materials and let me just show you this uh, because I was you know I'm, I was getting excited before Christmas it slowed way down and right on the 25th in the evening it started to pick up quite a bit and I think I'll show you the reasons why I think it's important but again I am putting I'm, again my goal is to get about one ebook a month or one ebook a week I should say on to Kindle now don't be intimidated by the term ebook because for them let me just show you here by the way so these are all of the titles that I have if we list 25 and I have 10 or 12 of them now but so I had an old book that I did with my now wife called on uh, how to find love online but all of these if you notice if you take a look and, and uh, just can everyone see um, let me just see here. Can everyone see? Uh, uh, one second on your question, Kevin. Um, can everyone see clearly this list? Is it coming across big enough? Can somebody just send me a, a question that gives me an answer to that? Are you, you know, is it is the type big enough that you can see this? I'll try and make it a little bit bigger, but I'm not sure how big I can make it here. Without, whoop, that's pretty big. Okay, yeah. It just makes me have to scroll, which I can do here. Okay, good. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, so here's, and let me, if you don't mind, let me go back because it's a little bit easier to, to deal with that. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different titles here. Most of them, you can see, are at this 99 cent price tag. A couple of them, marking and promoting your own seminars and workshops, is at 299. And this was on the dating, uh, how to win the dating game, the online success, is at 299 as well. Now, let me show you why. First off, why I price stuff that way, and if I've said this before, I apologize. At 99 cents, you're going to get 35% or only about 30 cents per book. But obviously, you want to get a lot of those, and I'll show you some how, how the orders have been coming in. At 299, as soon as you hit 299, Amazon gives you 70%. And if you want to get started with this, you just go to kdp.amazon.com and you can set up your own account as a Kindle publisher. Uh, um, so what I've done is a book that was already selling really well, marking and promoting your own seminars and workshops, this one right here, I priced at $2.99 because it already had it already had some you know some people who had bought the book, some people who made copy uh, comments about it, et cetera, et cetera. So I can show you on Amazon what that list what that looks like, but just keep that in mind. But also look at the titles here: 35 seminar marketing tips and secrets, consulting secrets. There's one thing that stuck out to me like a sore thumb. Watch when I go to my reports to show you the number of units sold thus far this month. And by the way, this is starting to go up every month, and it's on a nice arithmetic, not geometric, but an arithmetic growth curve, meaning that every month it's really going steadily up and up and up. So right now I'm clicking on the reports topic, and it's going to show you my actual real-time data on the sales of these different, different e-books that I've done. So if you look here, um, I'm going to click on month-to-date unit sales, right? And then I'm going to show you what those numbers are. And, hey, how are you? And, and so I am doing here this, everything that is selling well, you will see, has a certain word in it. So I'd like you to take a look at this list right here. You'll notice that the biggest sellers are this one right here. 12 units, 23 units, 15 units, and 18 units. And <laughs> Kevin, I'll get to your questions here in a second, but can someone, who's going to win the prize, the prize, by the way, which is just notoriety, <clears throat> can you give me, tell me what's common about all of those with the greatest number of sales? What is it that's, what is it that is common among all of those four particular 
items. Can someone tell me what that is? Go ahead and type it in the question box now and see if you can tell me what that is. Let me see. Any, any ideas? Any thoughts? Let's see here. Somebody, I guess somebody's typing. I can't even get to the darn thing. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> okay, yes, Kevin, Kevin, you win that prize. Kevin Hanley uh, says marketing. The term marketing is in all of them. Therefore, it becomes very clear that what I should be doing is what? Which is writing more Kindle ebooks around the term marketing. Now, this didn't take somebody with a PhD in anything to tell you this. It just takes looking at your data. So clearly, now I'd started, because I already had this book here, this, this, uh, the one that has made no sales, The Winning the Dating Game, the one that I wrote about uh, how my wife and I found each other online. So I, I'm not going to be doing any more books like that. In fact, I put up a, a bid, and I, I put up a bid. I'll tell you how this worked, because it might be something you want to do as well. I went to... Uh, I went to guru.com, and at guru.com, I asked someone if they would write a, uh, a book on step parenting for me. And I got a quote on a 10,000-word book, around, yeah, probably eight to 10,000, for a ridiculous amount of money. I think it was 120 bucks. But I'm now thinking of withdrawing that particular item because it doesn't seem like that's what people want from me or from the market. So rather than saying to myself, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to publish what I want about topics I want. Instead, I'm very market driven. I'm trying to get people to, you know, to tell me what they want to buy. So I'm doing it this way. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing books and I will be doing more books about areas in which I'm making the highest number of sales. And so I'm concentrating on information marketing, which is clearly getting 23 sales here, and one marketing promoting your own seminars and workshops here for 15, another one marketing your coaching services for 18, and I'm going to sort of just stay within the realm of marketing, because clearly that's sort of what I do, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on. So there you have it. Um, now let me get back to it. Um, okay, so let's see here. For that type, for that type of end game, is it possible to format the book yourself and use KDP, or do you need to hire someone like Josh to do it? Good question, Kevin. It is. It's really, really easy to do this, and the nice thing is. So again, let me back up. And Kevin's question is, you know, can you do this yourself? That is the Kindle publishing, and the answer is yes. Now the nice thing is that once once you come up with a template for publishing your Kindle ebooks, you can use it again and again and again and again. So all you need to do is just do a copy, uh, save as, and put in a new topic there and replace the data and do it over and over and over again. So the answer is Kevin. Now, doing it right the first time is a little bit difficult if you want the following to happen. If you want to have your chapter, um, your table of contents set up so that everybody can click on that particular chapter, chapter three, and it goes directly to chapter three, that becomes a little bit of a pain in the neck, although you don't have to do that. If you do that, it's a little bit more difficult to format. Also, the other thing is, is that, and this is really weird, because when you go to kdp.amazon.com, you'll see it, it will tell you how you need to format your books. And you have to format them in Microsoft Word, but not in the most recent version of Microsoft Word. You've got to format it in Microsoft Word 2004, I think. I'm not sure, but again, go to KDP and look at the formatting that they need. But it's really, they want it really, really simple. And really simple is you just, you know, you put in, in, in bold and you don't put a whole lot of fancy formatting. Basically, answer your question, Kevin, is yes. But let me just prep, let me, let me, let me add to those, to that statement, the fact that when you do it the first time, it'll be a little bit difficult, only because you don't know how you're supposed to do it, and they make it sort of tough for you to find that information. But it is a very simple uh, process using Microsoft Word in which you put title here and this there, and, and, and there, they have some things. But take a look at, at any, and if you, here's what you do. 
go ahead and download any of my books that you find on Amazon. Uh, just download a sample. You don't even have to pay the 99 cents. So just down, or if you pay the 99 cents and get one of them, you can you can see exactly the formatting. It's all done in Microsoft Word. It's all really simple. They don't want you to have a lot of extraneous characters. And again, most of what you will hear in the interview with Joshua Talent will, you know, obviously Josh makes his living by formatting. I would call them more fancy books in Kindle, books that are a little bit more elaborate. All of my books are just plain text at this point. So in answer to that question, Kevin, it is, uh, you don't need to hire someone like him to do that. Uh, let me see if there are any other questions here. Okay, let me see here. <clears throat> Takeaway is how, how to, yeah. Um, Lynn is saying that the, uh, that what's common among all of these on my list is how to, but not really. I didn't use how to in the title here, although it's a how to kind of book. <laughs> this is how to here. This one is not, this one how to on the Kindle. My Kindle Money Management system will only sell three copies, so how to is not really what's working. What seems to be common among all these is the term, the individual term market. Marketing, marketing, information marketing, seminar marketing. That seems to be what's common to all the books that are selling well. Now, I would suggest to you that you shouldn't necessarily do books on marketing. What you should be doing books is on topics where you have expertise and you find that people start buying a lot of stuff from you. So don't think that you know you should be doing books on marketing. I think it's because I've developed something of a reputation and if you look at it more specifically in the field of information marketing that we're talking about here and that's what I do everything of mine about and that's why I have those kinds of sales. Now here's the other thing to look at which is when we go to Amazon itself and we go to the Kindle ebook and by the way this is a good exercise. You go to the Kindle store and now I put in here just to show you information marketing made easy. You'll also see that I have their five star four reviews and it's five stars, five out of five stars, right? So when you click on that, and I talked about this in the last one, in, the, in our last webinar, and by the way, any of you, if you've missed, and let me, I should put this up before I do anything else, which is if you want to see recordings of any of my other webinars, go to Fred Gleek, let me spell my own name, .com forward slash webinars, or click on the webinars tab, and you can see them. there's tons of them there, so just make sure and do that if you want more of this. So here's information marketing made easy, and I think one of the reasons, now here's something interesting. I allow people, if they want, to do this, which is you can, in part of your, in one of your decisions that you make on your Kindle publishing, is whether or not you want to allow people to download your book for free, and, and, and people are allowed, if they're Prime, Amazon Prime members, they can download one book for free every month, and sort of like, it's like a lending library. So they're basically getting access to your Kindle for free. Well, at 99 cents, I'm not making big money anywhere. Who, who cares? As far as I'm concerned, I, I wish I could price this at free. By the way, Amazon will not let you price your book at zero unless you're selling it someplace else for that price, and then Amazon will match the price. And I'm not sure exactly how that works, so I, I, I can't answer the question. But it's nice to have information marketing is probably, if people are searching for that term, this is coming up, then they see that there are four reviews and they're all five stars, and that probably helps. And so there's there's good stuff here. Now let's see if if people found any of these reviews. By the way, if you want to do a favor for me, um, you know, go in and, and if you get a hold of any of my books or whatever, just say you know, give a give an honest review and and put in there. And, and it's also good to say that you found certain things, certain reviews helpful, so that if you do that, that tends to to help as well. Now, people also reviewed this book when they reviewed that one. And so there's a bunch of different things. But the nice thing about it is Amazon, for the, pur for the purposes of research, I'm going to click on under Kindle Store here, watch that one, click on Kindle eBooks, and you can look at all the different categories down here of different kinds of eBooks. And this is where, when you put your book into the Kindle system, it asks you where you should categorize it. 
and you'll be able to see. But now, the other thing is, if we just went to the general category of nonfiction, it will give us, and if we can we sort it by popularity, which is, I think that's the same as bestseller. Yeah, that's what bestseller is. Uh, huh, this is an interesting one. Kindle free for all. How to get millions of, of free Kindle ebooks and other free content with or without an Amazon Kindle. Now, this is obviously sort of a cool title because people are at the Kindle store, and uh, that would be a good thing to do. Now, notice this person has also put theirs up, and hopefully they have bounce back offers in here. But it's interesting to see for research purposes, you know, what is selling. And in the category of nonfiction, the top selling book is a puzzle book. Notice it's out of 781 thousand results. So there's a lot of things for sale. So it's interesting to look at, you know, what what are people, what what is selling here? Um, and, and look at that, give you an idea of what you may want to think about. Notice how a lot of things, especially this time of year, probably has to do with gifts. So people are, uh, you know, giving books on Scrabble, I would imagine, and Solitaire. You know, the, the Steve Jobs book is still popular. But it's it's an interesting place to research. So then if you go within each of the categories, let's go to advice and how to, within that, you're sorting by popularity within that category. So you're now seeing what people are finding, uh, what, what people are buying. And I would not say that you should try and just produce what people are buying. I would say use it as a guide to decide on what you would want to get yourself. So that's a couple of things to do there. And I know we've talked about this a little bit more. Um, what else? Um, does anybody have any other questions here? Let's see here. Any other questions? You're welcome, Kevin. Kevin says thanks. Um, any other questions? Feel free to bring them up because, like I said, most of my uh, JV partners are not on the line of Vish and Bill. Uh, oh, I should show you. Uh, he's very proud of this, and it, it's now the new version of voice-over-training.org. If you've been on these before, you've seen Bill DeWeese, and he's one of my JV partners. And this is his newly designed site, which looks pretty good. And uh, by the way, this is sort of an interesting feature, the way Bill set this up. Watch how this, these testimonials here rotate every so often. So he gets people with their pictures, and they're uh, uh, rotating. And I'm not sure which plugin is being used on, uh, on WordPress for that. But it's sort of cool that he's doing that. He has these rotating testimonials. I also think it's cool that we now have the names of all of his big shot clients like Warner Brothers and National Geographic and Cisco and Whirlpool and HP and Verizon right here under his video. By the way, I would look at, 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 uh, at Bill's site very carefully because this headline right here, if I can highlight the whole thing, this headline along with, I can't do it. anyway, this headline here along with his video are very, very effective at getting people to opt in at a very, very high rate. So if you're looking to increase your own opt-in rates, take a look at Bill's site, watch his video, see what he does, look at this particular system that he has and it seems to be working well, and I would just, I would steal it. I would copy and do something very similar uh, in your field, obviously. Now, he's got different things. He's got some events coming up also in the way we did it now. And again, not all the, link, not all the links are live here yet. But if you click on events, what it allows you to do is to find out what upcoming events he has. And again, I think I've got a slow internet connection here. That's why it's not loading very fast. Or maybe he's changing it right now as we speak. But anyway, he had a list here of upcoming events. Let's see, if you click on coaching, again, he may be in the process literally right now of updating this. Notice he puts the same opt-in form and video on, I think, virtually every page of the site. So you see here on the right, so he's got that here as well. So click here for more info and to apply. Now watch what happens when it does this. So when you click here, I've got to reduce this down because I'm recording this and have a certain area to record it in. So what Bill is doing here is you, you click on a link and it's going to a separate site. And it's very similar to my jvwithfred.com site. And I would encourage you to take a look. So this is voicetalentcoach.com. And when you click on Get Coaching from Bill, he gives you a little form to fill out here. And it submits and goes to him automatically, which is a great way to do that as well. Um, other things about Bill's site that we should probably look at, again, some of these things he's in the process of revising. It used to be when you clicked on events, he would get a, you'd get a list of his upcoming events, of which he has two. But I think right now, again, he may be updating. Oh, there it is. 
So that was just a slow internet connection. So now he's got his audiobook workshop. It's coming up in the Chicagoland area. It's on the 4th and 5th of February, limited to eight participants. Uh, voiceover marketing workshop again on the uh, in April 21st and 22nd, limited to eight participants. And by the way, it's limited to eight participants because what Bill did is what I suggest he do, which is he took his, you know, he, you know, he took his house and converted his uh, basement into a seminar quote facility. It's a very loose word for term there. So now what happens is he has virtually zero cost entailed with doing the seminars. And both of those events, I think, retail for a minimum. One of them is, I think, $12.97, and that's because he included uh, like a demo tape for people who are in that business. So conceivably, he could be making you know an extra ten or $15,000 right out of his house uh, in addition to his thriving voiceover business. So. Um, that's, it, it's a good idea to look at this site and, and just take a look at everything he's got here and how he's doing it. And this new redesign looks pretty good. Um, I got a couple comments that this voiceover training right here could probably be a little bit bigger. That it seems like it might be, it, it should be larger and take up more space, maybe from here to here. Uh, but we'll see how it does. I mean, I don't want to mess with something that's, that's working. Um, so there you have it. That's Bill Ruiz's site now. On the Speaking Expert site, which is Avisha's, speakingexpert.com, and this is Avisha Parisher, another of the JV partners here, um, we have got some more information here. I'm just realizing I'm going to have to plug my computer in. And uh, we're doing it on here because I'm not sure where all the plugs are. So this is my first time doing things in this location. And let's see. It's a plug over there, and that's a little far from where I want to be. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we'll let this come up. I've got about 37% left. Hopefully, it'll take us through the webinar. Okay, so um, Avisha's site, and um, this is our material here that we have together. It's all for professional speakers. And again, this site, now the opt-in rate on this isn't quite as good as Bill's, but I think he has a much better, more targeted audience. And by the way, let me just show you, this is really good. I'm glad I remember this this time. Um, I have a thing on my desktop that I keep up there called the rank report here. Let me just put in voice, dash over, dash training. The term, his, a couple of his dead center keyword terms, is one is voice over training. And we're not getting as good results as voiceover business. So let me put that in because I'm a little bit happier about those results. So by the way, this is where you find this tool, which I suggest you use. Um, and let me just put it up here in bigger type for you. And I think I've put this up before on this webinar, but it bears repeating. So go ahead and copy that so it's mikes-marketing-tools.com forward slash ranking dash reports. I, I can't vouch for anything else this guy does or says. I just know this tool's work. So, you know, be careful. Um, click search engine results here, and we're going to see. I'm going to small this down so that I can show everybody what we got. Okay. And so here are, now that's weird, I got an error. An error for Google for that term. Let's see, I don't know why that would, because that was showing up here. Notice every time I do this, it gives us different results. So back on the 22nd of December for the term voiceover business, Google placed 10th, Yahoo placed 4th, AOL 9th. Now we, you know, and this is where things bounce around quite a bit. So this is 9 on Yahoo, 9 on AOL. So it's actually lost ground and now there's an error on Google. Who knows what that's because of. But um, this is a great place to, because a lot of times when you check your, your result, So when you do your own Google searches, sorry, to see where to see where you end up for various terms, what you're going to get are inaccurate real results. And this, by using this Mike's tool, uh, you get around that. So you won't have to, 
worry about that at all if you use this tool. Now let's try uh, voice over training. Voice over training, and it autofills because I've done something there before. So here it is for voice over training, and let's see what comes up. Another error for Google. Google must be having a problem connecting. Um, 27 on Yahoo, and uh, AOL no on that. So let's see what's happened here. The last time we did this, if you can take a look at this, voice over training, I did this on Christmas Eve, and it was number 32 in Yahoo. It's now gone to 27. That's moving in, in the right direction. Uh, it's not yet showing up in Bing and AOL. Who knows why? But if we go back further, you can see that I've gone back and checked these way back to, you know, voiceover training was originally 17 and 37. And you can look at your movement and how things are going. So if you're trying to optimize for various kinds of terms on Google, this will help you do it. So I would encourage you to, uh, to do that. Now, David said I, I lost sound. Sorry about that. Again, it might be the, uh, it's, it might be the, the, the speed of the internet connection. Um, there are services, David asks or says, that help with title selection all the way from $99 on up. Any of them good, or will they do the same research you have shown already? Um, David, if they're doing title selection for you for Kindle eBooks, if that's what you're asking, I think you're probably paying for something you don't need to do. You can do this yourself. You're smart enough, you can figure this out. Now, there are people that are doing basically some of the things I'm doing. They're probably something a little bit more, but it would be worth, uh, you know, checking it out. I certainly wouldn't pay the 99 bucks just to come up with titles. Uh, and again, really the question is, what are you an expert at? And not, you know, sort of trying to contrive information around what other people really are, are, are liking. So I would make sure that you think about first what it is your expertise is and then go from there. Um, so I hope that's helpful a little bit. Does anybody have any other questions then? Because I'm going to try and, you know, give you just what you want here because, again, I don't have any of the uh, joint, the traditional joint venture partners tr present that I can ask uh, or talk to and, and give them very specific info here. And uh, now, Mark, did you have, Mark Slitch, Mark, do you have anything that you, uh, that's new with the site there that we can show people? So I don't know if we can show people here uh, if there's any new movement injuryguru.com. And this is Mark from Iceland here. And he's uh, getting going here. Because again, I'm leaving him out only because his, his site is sort of getting put together. And he's redone some things here. And so Mark does a lot of work with uh, sports and, and muscle rehabilitation, showing people how to do that. And um, the tail of my shoulder, by the way, I like this graphic. I don't know where you got this. That looks pretty cool, this shoulder graphic there. Um, OK, so let's see here. It's looking, looks pretty good. What is rehab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it looks, I think it looks a lot better. I think it looks pretty good. Um, now, the only thing is that you probably want to do, Mark, here is to add some of the things. I would just go back over, and if we toggled back and forth between here and um, if I did another tab, if we did here and build the leases site, uh, voice over training. So I would add some of these items here, blog, contact, resources, events, coaching products, those things, to your site here along the top that would probably be good to do. So you can add, just again, use, <coughs> use the voiceover site as an example of what you need to add to your site to make it a little bit better that way. Um, okay, so regarding SEO, do you have a favorite technique or service? Um, so let me just, you know, I'm lucky in that I now rank for about 14 terms at number one for things related to information marketing. So when you put in information marketing in Google or in Mike's ranking report, I'll come out number one. Um, and I, I actually hold number one ranking, at number one or two, for about 14 or 15 different terms. And so the question is, how did I get there? And I think it's two or three things. I'll just list them for you. Uh, David, number one is lots of great content. My site has got uh, 13, 14, 1,500 pages now, whatever it is, of packed with great information. 
Uh, the fact that I interviewed one of Google's big shots didn't hurt. I don't know if you've seen that. But if you haven't seen this, also, everybody who's on this call, on the webinar here, if you haven't watched this yet, you're nuts. And I would encourage everyone to go watch this. Now, you know what? I think I just went to, I'm trying to get to the general blog site. Hold on. Craig, what are you? Um, forward slash blog. So if you go to the fregleek.com forward slash blog, you can then um, you can then take a look at the um, this interview that I did with Vinton Surf. And Vinton Surf um, is the guy, by the way, and if you see his picture, he's the guy that they they patterned. That's my pop up to go to the boot camp. This is the guy who um, his he was used as the guy in the Matrix uh, because he is like one of the guys who actually founded the internet. And so, if you go to FregLeak.com, you should watch this. This is just a trailer, and then you have to give him put your name and email address in here, and you get to watch the whole thing, which is close to an hour. And the reason why you want to go and watch this is let me just show you this. So, Vint Surf, and let's show you who he is. So. Then serve. And by the way, he, he the guy in the Matrix, they patterned after him, and he looks very much like the guy. So he's won the, the, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. This guy is a heavy hitter. Um, and so he's, Vinton Cerf was instrumental in, in the funding and formation of ICANN from the start. Okay, so listen to this line. So uh, where is it? Did he... Um, he, the term that they use for him, he's, he's, he's known as one of the fathers, the two fathers of the Internet, along with a guy named Bob Kahn. So this is the guy. And what I did is I asked him questions about um, information marketing for those of us uh, you know, who are in the... Uh, so if we go back to... Uh, where is it here? Information marketing. I put that back just another. So if we go back here to the blog site, and it might, for those of you who haven't seen this interview, this is really, this was, this guy was amazingly cool for me. There's the pop-up again. Let me just show you that for a second. This is, this is good stuff. So what I did is I interviewed him. I, 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 I don't think I can enlarge that screen. For those of us who market and sell information, all of which is, is going towards a completely digital format, What's the future for those of us who are actually trying to make a living if every, everything is tending towards free? I see the internet as this really big tent. Anything that's digitizable, in theory, can be delivered through the internet. But that doesn't mean that it has to be free. I think this is a mistake that many people make. The question, of course, is how do I protect the information so that I am assured that it doesn't get into people's hands who haven't been authorized and haven't compensated? Uh, you or your uh, audience for their information. What should my strategies be to try and get people to see me in this massive sea of the internet? Now that's, well, the, for this that's the, uh, the $64,000 question, David, which is regarding SEO. So here's your answer. It is the, the fundamental problem, not just in the internet, but just generally. How do you make yourself visible through any channel to a potential customer? You know, we're trying to find ways of helping the information provider not only be discovered, but also generate some revenue. It's almost as if, unless I get to the very top, the number one position, or probably the top two or three, I'm sort of in no man's land. Well, what we think at Google is that the more we understand about what it is you're looking for, the better we can respond to you. Do you envision also that if I'm out in the hills of Iowa driving in a rental car, that I'll have some kind of a device that will be able to access all the stuff that's on my cloud, including my music and my videos, etc.? Absolutely. In fact, I have to wait for the day or push for the day when we have packets raining down on us from broadcasts. And the reason why he says that, that he, he waits for the day we have ra packets raining, raining down from the sky, because he was one of the guys who created uh, and invented the concept of packets, which is sets in, of information. I don't really understand it. My wife went to MIT, I didn't. So um, on, on how this works, which is packets of information that come down, and that's how they're sent uh, through the internet. So again, worth looking at this. So <clears throat> let me just see if there are any other questions. And let, go ahead and ask me any other questions you have right now relevant to any topic that you want. You can ask me about anything at all, because again, I want to make sure that we get your questions 
answered here. So I'll give you a couple more minutes to figure out if there's anything else you need answered. But again, go watch that entire interview. It goes about an hour. And for anybody in the information marketing business, it is worth watching if you're even if a little bit curious. So again, we'll do this again next Wednesday, same time, same channel. But I want to see if there's any other questions that you have before I call it a day. So I'll give you another few seconds to decide. OK, this question here. Oh, that's a nice, uh, very specific, very uh, very tight, tight question there, Lynn. <laughs> How do you market ebooks? Well, um, the marketing of ebooks. I mean, you're, you either have when you have when you, when you say how do you market ebooks, um, you've got one of two ways to market in general. Number one is so ways to market ebooks. There's yourself and others. By others, I would mean Amazon, Nook, Smashwords. If you haven't heard about them, you should check that out because they. They're sort of an aggregator for all the different sites. And then yourself, which is via your own website, which I think last week I told I just don't want to be doing too much repetition. But I took one of my one of my books that I got most excited about that the system has not gotten people haven't bought as much of, and I put up Kindle Money Magic. And this is Lynn and answer your question, how do you market ebooks? You put them up on, on the right sites and get them there and Start sending traffic there if you can, and then you also have a site dedicated to your individual ebooks. Uh, and of course, it'd be nice if you were to register all of your domain names, of course, through my site, Ultra Cheap Domains. So if you want to register all those at Ultra Cheap Domains, I'll put a quarter in my pocket, big money there. Ultra Cheap Domains. And here's what I do: is I'm setting up these individual ebook sites. I'm going to have these set up for every single one of my ebooks, separate domain names and a separate site that will have the following. And this, again, sorry, this is slow to load. But here's what's happening. This KindleMoneyMagic.com site is sort of an example. And what, when it finally comes up, and again, use the connection speed here. But it is, a, it is a template for how you should set up your individual Kindle ebook sites. So, Lynn, one of the ways you're going to want to do it is to have a site set up like this. And if it doesn't load, then you guys can go check it out on your own. And let me just take that and copy the, uh, you know, copy the title there and put it over in here. And so you're going to be putting it. So go to KindleMoneyMagic.com because this thing is going to take forever to load and I don't want to hold you up. So anyway, that's a good final question. And again, David, thank you very much. Happy New Year to everyone. Next time I see you, it will be 2012. And I want to thank you for participating and being on the call. And we'll see you again next week. Spread the word and go back and watch the previous events of the previous webinars. Happy New Year, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.